interesting topic. And um, I think it's important that the Eurasian Creative Guild, OCA magazine, um, actually tackles this. It, um, it, the topic has come about, uh, and I'm really pleased that uh, one of our participants this afternoon uh, is Stephen Bland, because he's written an article um, for OCA magazine, number 45 magazine, the summer one that's just out, um, touching on this subject and actually um, bringing it back to the fore. I, I remember living in Kazakhstan in 2014 when the then president um, suggested that the, the name of Kazakhstan should be changed. I know that's been uh, muted before that, but he, he made a big thing of it and uh, it did cause quite a stir amongst the population. And so I'd be very interested to hear our speakers this afternoon. Um, so I'm very pleased to say that uh, Stephen is here, so we can ask him questions about his article as well. Um, but um, I would like to introduce our four speakers this afternoon. Um, the first speaker doesn't really need an introduction, but I'm going to give him one anyway. Uh, Marat, Marat uh, Akhmedjanov, who is the vice chairman uh, and the founder of Eurasian Creative Guild. Uh, and I'm very, very grateful to him uh, for, for doing that. Um, he is a driving force in uh, relationships between Central Asia and the rest of the world. And um, he is also the most hardworking person that I actually know. So I'm very pleased that he is here today to, to give his views on this. We have uh, three other speakers. Mohammed Sheraz, who is a communication professional, uh, currently in Almaty, um, but also has um, uh, links with London. He used to work for the BBC World Service and uh, is the director of the International Centre for Strategic Communications at Kazakhstan National Agrarian Research University. So we're very pleased for him to be here. Uh, back to Gul, back to Gul Marin Betzok. I am very pleased that she is here, member of the advisory board of Eurasian Creative Guild. And we are very, very happy with your work and uh, your hard work for the Guild. Um, she is uh, an author of manuals to do with uh, language learning, uh, owns businesses in Kazakhstan uh, around language and also literacy and uh, I'm looking forward to her, to her input. She's also a consultant of the Women's Scientists Fund of Kazakhstan. Uh, and I think there could be a good slant on the, on the discussion from her this afternoon. Uh, our fourth speaker is Dr. Ravis Abazov. Um, he's visiting professor at Kaznaru um, in Almaty, uh, where he tells me it's very hot at the moment. Um, but he's also uh, got connections with the Earth Institute of Columbia University, New York. Um, he regularly contributes to Forbes magazine uh, and has written lots and lots of books uh, on the actual culture and customs of Central Asia. Um, apparently, he is a, 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 an avid collector of rare books on British exploration in Central Asia. Uh, so that could be another topic for a, a later discussion. So, again, I'm looking forward to his views on this particular topic. I, I don't want to take up any more of your time. I want to hear what the experts have to say. Um, we will try and keep to time, uh, and as Vitalina says, uh, if you can keep muted during the uh, discussion uh, or during the presentations, and then we'll have chance for discussion at the end to answer your questions. So, is everybody okay? We've got a couple of people whose cameras aren't on, but I'm sure that's not a problem, as long as they can hear everything. I am going to call on Marat first to open the discussions, because... Uh, I know he has strong views on this, and then we will come to each of the speakers in turn uh, as we go through the course of this meeting. Uh, can I just say thank you very much, all of you, for joining us, um, because it's important that, uh, A, we have an audience, but also we get lots of opinions on this. So over to you, Marat. Thank you, uh, uh, Gareth. I would like to welcome everyone from quite a a cold England uh, for last couple of days. It's from plus nine to plus 19. Uh, here at Midlands is getting a bit colder than in London. So as someone is um, struggling with hot weather in Almaty, I mean, I'm a bit uh, jealous we don't have as warm weather here in England. Um, yes, the topic today uh, been discussed quite a lot in Kazakhstan for last probably 30 years uh, since the Kazakhstan got its independence. And um, there was different proposals, there was different names, there was different reasons um, behind it. 
Um, and I think before I'll come to uh, some of my ideas, uh, which uh, we described in the article Kazakhstan, new name, new life, and new targets, it's written uh, by myself and my colleague, Diana Kaunis. I would like uh, maybe to give a floor to Stephen Blunt to give a bit of a, of, of a history uh, based on his article. Um, I mean, what countries and why is the change its name? So uh, Stephen, I will appreciate if you'll make a short introduction. <coughs> Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, so um, I think I should start by saying that a country changing its name, it's, uh, it's not as unusual as one might think, and it happens for a variety of reasons. Um, in recent times, we've seen Macedonia become North Macedonia to settle an ongoing dispute with Greece. But we've also seen the Czech Republic rebrand itself as Czechia, for um, more, more pragmatic reasons, so to say. Um, obviously, this, is, this has been running for quite some time, as Gareth said, should Kazakhstan change its name? Would it make a big difference? And would it actually catch on? Um, for example, Kyrgyzstan is, is known as that to most people, although officially it's the Kyrgyz Republic. So, would change of name actually catch on? How much would it cost? We saw um, Swaziland rebrand itself um, to... You see, this is the point. I can't even remember what Swaziland is now called, even though they spent £6 million to change their name. And But does anybody actually know what the country's called now? But in the case of Kazakhstan, yeah, the rebranding exercise could distance itself from the stand neighbors who don't always have a good reputation in the outside world as they're known for instability and dictatorship. And as has often been said, Kazakhstan is quite separate from its neighbors. It's much larger. It has a much bigger economy. It has much more contact around the world. Um, Britain, for example, has a huge amount of investment in Kazakhstan because it's an intensely natural resource rich land. Um, <clears throat> but, um, and Kazakhstan's not, not adverse to seeing change. We've seen the alphabet change a lot of times. We've seen city names change over and over again. So it is an evolving place where, where change is not foreign. However, I do think that coupled with any change of name, which could be a useful exercise, what would also be necessary would be another reset, a reset in terms of not arresting opposition figures, more freedom of the press, more freedom of expression. So if a change of name also accepts a change in society as part of the remit, then it will be a useful exercise. Uh, that's my opening thoughts. Thank you uh, very much, uh, uh, Stephen, for your short introduction. Um, uh, the Kazakhstan, um, even it goes back in the history for over 500 years with uh, Kazakh um, uh, Khanate. I mean, it's got its uh, independence uh, in 1991, becoming like a proper sovereign country, um, uh, establishing its national identity. And the name of Kazakhstan came quite late. I mean, it's, it's a new name. I believe it's in 1930. I might be wrong in, in a few years, but it's kind of, kind of uh, almost in the mid uh, 20th um, uh, century when all the... Um, uh, Soviet Union uh, countries, uh, especially in Central Asia, got uh, uh, a stun uh, uh, addition because initially it also was Kazakh Soviet Republic, Kyrgyz Soviet Republic, or um, Uzbek Soviet um, Republic. I think the Kazakhstan name became an official name only since the independence, in, uh, so it's mid 1991. Um, does it fit the Kazakh uh, mentality and identity? I think no. Uh, nobody even asked. There was no referendum. Uh, there was no public discussion. The country was named just kind of uh, a legacy of Soviet Union. 
uh, if we will look into the history, I mean, of any historical book in Kazakhstan, there's no such name as the Kazakhstan prior Soviet Union. So it's quite a strange name. It's unusual name. It's mixed of, uh, some people say it has a Persian origin, the Stan, which means land. If you look at the Slavic um, uh, um, uh, dictionaries, it's also come from uh, Stajanka, Panovice, uh, uh, the place where people live, which is also quite common in Slavic uh, um, languages. But it has no any affiliation to nomadic culture or to, Tur or to Turkic language. Uh, and by keeping all the countries the same, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, it just makes them not as, as united, but probably losing its personal identity, at least in my uh, um, um, opinion. And uh, with um, quite a lot of negative uh, background we've got here in the West, uh, as people probably remember, there was a British TV series, Stunts, which made so, so, uh, so, so many jokes, I mean, what the Stunts is. And for a lot of people in UK, and when I travel to the uh, to US, they, they don't even call it Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, they just call us Stunts. Then the Stunts is something on the outskirts of, uh, um, Eurasia, something undeveloped, something altogether, something which does not have a unique identity. Uh, this feeling I've got being a, a publisher, publishing books for the last uh, 20 years here in the UK. We published over 200 books. I always struggle to explain what the Kazakhstan is. I mean, of course, I mean, people who work with the Kazakhstan, I mean, experts who live in Kazakhstan, they do know about it. Um, but if you talk to people on the street, or, or, but even go, go, uh, coming to school or university, we need to start in explaining. And when it's come to the question, why Stan? And people do ask me, why Stan? Why Kazakhstan? Why Uzbekistan? Why Kyrgyzstan? There's no logical explanation just because Soviet Union decided to do so. Uh, just because it's someone decided, okay, let's call it Stan. Uh, and I, yes, I understand why probably the current government of the Kazakhstan not really keen to change the name because of other priorities, because of uh, potential expenses, it, 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 it's my carry. Uh, but we're not talking about changing it tomorrow. I mean, we're just opening a discussion. Uh, and again, that needs to be changed immediately. It does need to be changed at, at, at expense. It's going to take a longer process. What we tend to, uh, to do publishing articles in our magazine is just a start a discussion. Uh, should it change the name? What will it be a name? Will it fit the identity? Will it help the country uh, to, uh, to promote itself? From a tourism point of view, uh, from political point of view, from identity point of view, I think the Kazakhstan definitely should have a new name. Uh, and, and why and what name I think we can discuss together. I, we oh, oh, already offered a few names with uh, Tyler in our um, articles. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you read the article, you will read an article after uh, uh, um, a, 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 a discussion today. But before we will be going further what the Kazakhstan uh, should be named, I also would like to hear opinion of our other speakers. Uh, Garrett? Okay, thank you very much, Murad. Some uh, interesting questions raised there. Um, and uh, actually, I, I've learned a bit about where the name Kazakhstan comes from. I wasn't uh, wasn't clear about that. Um, OK, let's move on straight away. Uh, Mohammed Sheraz, uh, you are there in Almaty, I believe. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Do you can you hear me? Yes, we can. Do you hear me? OK. Yes, yes. All right. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm really glad uh, to be part of this discussion. Um, even though being a foreigner, a foreigner, I don't think I have the right to comment on such a sensitive issue, which is uh, Kazakhstan's internal uh, issue. But being an observer, I'd just like to make a few comments. Uh, first First, it is totally, entirely the right of the people of Kazakhstan in democratic spirit or that they choose a name. If they are happy with their present name, it's, we are perfectly okay with it. Everybody should be okay with it. 
they should be happy that uh, they should be, you know, there should be no objection to that. So I leave this to the people of Kazakhstan and whatever the majority decides in the, in the uh, democratic spirit, then that should be the name. And if the Kazakhstani people and the government of Kazakhstan do not bring this on the top of their agenda priority, then also it is their right. I strongly disagree with Stephen when he said that because of reputational issues, Kazakhstan should change its name. I think, yeah, I think it's a bit patronizing. I think it is, uh, uh, you know, an old uh, imperialistic mindset. And why should the country change its name and its reputation? Because someone in the West do not like or disagree certain parts of the world. We should remember that this part of the world is the, was the center of Turkish Iranian culture, which was the most, uh, you know, one of the similar, one was a very rich civilization. What we see today and what the West has taken in, in the field of science, philosophy, politics, civilization, they took it from this part of the world, which was historically very rich. As far as the Stan name is uh, concerned, it's Persian. And uh, it's uh, used to represent, you know, very rich uh, cultures. Iranian culture, for example, Persian culture has thousands of old uh, years old history, very rich history. Afghanistan has a old and rich history. Pakistan, though a new country, but has a rich history. Uh, so because for political reasons, and because what has happened in this part of the world, whether it was it, the creation of Pakistan is the gift of uh, ugly gift of British. If what is happening in Afghanistan, it was destroyed and ruined by the United States. What is happening in Iran and why Iran has this bad reputation? It's because of the policies of the United States and its allies. Therefore, we cannot say, and we must not say, we should apologize. We owe and apologize to this part, uh, to the people of this region for what we did to them. We, I mean, I, I'm a British citizen, and I feel like uh, we owe an apology to this part, this part of the world. Rather than we now want Kazakhstan, please change your name because you are Khan and Iran and Pakistan and Afghanistan are unstable politically and their reputation is not good because Western media, Western politicians and Western diplomats don't like it, you change your name. I think that's not the rash right rationale. I think that's not the right logic. I, I can continue later, thank you. Um, can, okay, thank you very much. I, I am going to reply. I, I am going to um, allow Stephen to reply because uh, um, that was very, very briefly. Um, I actually agree with you completely. I was not saying that it should change its name. I was just simply putting forward the points that people put forward when they say it should. But in everything you say, I actually agree with you. Okay, thank you, Stephen. Uh, we will come back. Uh, I hope, <laughs> to Mohammed. I knew this was going to be a, a, a thorny issue with different people because uh, the name of something is, is important. Um, I, I, I live in Bulgaria where I am at the moment and it's also incredibly hot here as well. Um, uh, but we're on the border with Turkey who have just changed their name. They've re-registered their name at the United Nations to Turkey. And again, it's a rebranding exercise. And I have to say, from, from my Turkish friends that, that, that I know, it seems to be for tourism reasons uh, more than anything else. Um, and that's how the Turkish people are seeing it. But that's a, a, an aside there. OK, let's uh, let's go to the next speaker. Um, Baktigul. Uh, Baktigul Mahana Betova is also in Almaty, I believe. Is that right? She has problems with Internet connection, so okay. hopefully join us soon. Okay, well, we'll, we'll move on. We, we have time. Uh, let's move on to Dr. Rafis Abazov, um, who I know is in Almaty. Can you hear me? Hello, good afternoon. How are you doing today? Very good, very good. Um, I see you have the UN Sustainable Development Goals behind you. Um, has that any impact on the change of a name of a country, or is, is, that, uh, is that just me being um, too inquisitive? Uh, you know, it has in a way, and uh, actually we could hear different angles 
uh, uh, look, uh, when we discuss this particular issue. And I would like to add one more angle and uh, probably academic. Uh, we can, when we talk, we have to have uh, to use specific approach because every approach has specific tools uh, to measure, to justify, and to understand. If you talk about political point of view, we have political tools. Uh, we, when we have uh, a post-colonial point of view, uh, what the, uh, Professor Said said, uh, we can have just cultural angle or anti-imperialistic angle. But if we go to scientific me measures, let's uh, look maybe from cultural anthropology point of view. When we look from cultural anthropology point of view, again, it's a scientific exercise, this idea how to look at it. And uh, of course, uh, this decision should be done. And I, I have some ideas about decision, what should be done and when should be done, but it's my private decision as a person who is here. But uh, around me about 19.9 uh, uh, million people, uh, those who might have different opinions. In democracy, we discuss, we come to compromise and we come up with a best solution. So coming back to ideas. So what's the meaning of idea to change? Does it have cultural connotation, historic or social? And uh, there are maybe a couple of angles uh, to look at it from cultural anthropology point of view. First of all, who would like to make a change? Because make a change is not a robot, not a country. We don't have this kind of decision maker as a country. People, but people are different, different social groups, stratas, uh, different uh, regions. So idea is to look from cultural point of view, who would like to change? Because some people say yes, some people say no, some people say maybe. So idea is to look what part of the lead uh, would like to do it. And idea is why, why they would like to do it. Very often people say, well, uh, people change the names uh, for political reasons, for uh, because of political pressure in case of North Macedonia, maybe uh, other reasons. But again, why? In this particular case, case uh, a lot of people, uh, and uh, today we're talking about uh, with an idea to distance themselves. Distance themselves or the country from what? From a neighborhood? Uh, you know, the, the, the neighborhood we have stands. Kyrgyzstan, uh, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, those who are very close uh, cousins of uh, Kazakhs. They were together for many, many centuries uh, and still come under the umbrella of the Turkic nations. So distance from them or from a religious uh, uh, like uh, identity, uh, so why? What's uh, behind this particular change? Or they would like to uh, distance themselves from the uh, past history. And when you talk to Kazakh scholars, like Kazakh, Kazakh scholars, they uh, sometimes say, look, uh, Kazakh, uh, the name of Kazakhstan or Kazakh land, it was recently invention. Before it was Alash, all kind of diff different names. So the uh, name of uh, name Kazakhstan came as a compromise. What Kazakhstan is Kazakh land. Kazakh Republic, uh, Kazakh state, and only in 1991, it became Kazakhstan. Otherwise, during the 20th century, they always uh, were called, in, in our state, they call, sometimes call them Kazakhstan, but officially it was what Kazakh Republic, like Marat said, uh, and land of Kazakh, this, this kind of connotation. So why? And again, and next issue is where, where this uh, exercise will take the nation and the country. So idea is to distance themselves from what, uh, or become part of what, become a part of Europe, become, become part of Great Asia, or be a Great Eurasia. So idea is that this particular change, where does it take the nation and where does it take the uh, country? This is, I think, should be a kind of valid question. And I would really appreciate if people would uh, like this, go contribute to this particular three questions. Who, why, and where? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, again, lots more questions. Um, and uh, I, I think as, as this topic unravels and, and goes on, uh, as I'm sure it will, it, it, in, not just in Kazakhstan, it will raise lots of questions. As you say, that, that's very, uh, um, very poignant. Um, I hope we can go to uh, back to Gul Makan Betova. I can see her picture. Back to Gul, are you there? Can you hear me? Oh, yes. Hello. Can you Good hear me? 
Yeah. Yes, good afternoon. You have the floor. Yeah. I, I'm very uh, pleased to, to meet you here. And that today's uh, topic is uh, very important for the citizens of the country. And the uh, very interesting thoughts are being presented right now for our discussion. And uh, I also try to uh, get out the feelings of the people from the country about the change of the state name in the future. Uh, and uh, most of all, like the idea uh, of the change, but there is a small uh, percentage that don't like the change of the country name. Uh, and then there might be presented several uh, reasons of this uh, uh, issue. But I think um, uh, time comes will be presented the perfect uh, uh, version of the uh, new name of the state. And um, uh, uh, in this um, matter, I'd like to accent on uh, one important uh, idea that may be more than um, serious than the name of the state, uh, the name of the uh, new uh, name of the state. Because uh, as the um, politics of uh, 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 president now, we are going to try to form new Kazakhstan. And the new Kazakhstan uh, demands a kind of new name. But um, uh, here, I just want to accent on the uh, feeling of the great figure in the Kazakh history. By the way, I have just, uh, you know, finished the book by Rehan Imahambet. Uh, century phenomenon, the book about Ahmed Baytursunola, the person who is, mm, who is uh, very, very oh. the person who is very important uh, in the history of the Kazakh state because uh, he uh, did a lot for the uh, Kazakh. Uh, he mm, presented, presented uh, you know, uh, this uh, feeling that it's the duty of every Kazakh to contribute to the growth of power for the nation. Because every time great things grow from small things. And uh, this is the very discussion. Now we are trying to find out a kind of solution to the presented issue. It's also very important for us and uh, not only for the Kazakh people, I can say that the friends of the nation, uh, I know uh, Kazakhstan uh, in the world has, uh, it's a very big uh, place uh, in, in, in all directions. And uh, uh, I might be exactly uh, sure that uh, it is uh, very, very important to distinguish the right um, a name uh, which might characterize the um, uh, picture of the state. Uh, uh, a group of people uh, just uh, try to accent on uh, on possible version of Kazakia, uh, you know, the uh, Kazakh sound, Kazakia, because uh, exactly we pronounce Kazakh in Kazakh. Uh, and uh, it is very interesting for, for me to see the attitude of the people, why they are exa exactly ac accenting on this uh, very uh, version. And uh, uh, another group of people uh, uh, would like to, to have the version of Kazakh Yele, which gives the meaning Kazakh state. And uh, uh, who knows, both versions are. Mm, interesting for me, but uh, here I, I would like to accent on one important issue. It is what? It is the language. Uh, because uh, again, Ahmed Baitar Sonola presented a kind of idea, the nation who loses its worth will be lost also, because it is very important issue for us. In my country, even in my family, I have this problem because little kids, 
uh, uh, small uh, school children speak Russian, so they attend Kazakh schools. Um, also, of the schools right now, uh, for uh, exactly, I can say the number of these uh, schools, about 7,500 uh, schools in Kazakhstan, only 50% of uh, the schools, um, uh, it is the uh, provide education in the pure state language, but the half, uh, it is presented in Russian. And it is the, I think the biggest problem uh, for us, if we keep on uh, following the same, uh, you know, uh, uh, how system of uh, education, we might be very sure that time comes, there will be presented the question, nation like Kazakh can, can exist uh, for a certain period or it can be lost because language is the most important thing because language is the power in, in this, uh you know matter and uh, here i just want to uh present the kind of feeling from uh, ahmed by that his uh feelings from his po poem is still actual for the people who live in kazakhstan i find groundwater kazakh similar to you no efforts to try just hopeless stay everyone goes ahead to the finish way do you don't move forward even one step away? My Kazakh, keep it in your mind. This friendly advice, which you can surely suit. It's not for fun to spread my words. I only tell my sweetheart to help. If you lie still without moving ahead, you will be like groundwater in the end. It is very, very strongly said in this poem. It is my own translation because I have just noted that I have uh, finished my uh, translation on this book. And the, it is very important for the um, people in Kazakhstan to think very, very hard about this matter because land, language, our traditions, our history, all these features are very important for us to keep the existence of a state. By the way, today, Mukhtar Shakhanov uh, is uh, very happy because uh, his uh, eight, uh, 80th anniversary is being celebrated in Turkey. Uh, he's awarded the highest reward of uh, the Turksoy uh, organization. And uh, uh, I'm very happy to, uh, con to congratulate him with the given uh, reward. And uh, I think Marat Akhmetyan is also very happy to hear about this news because everyone is uh, very sure about Mukhtar Shahan's poetry, who is number one patriot in our country. If you have uh, other questions, please, you're welcome. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much indeed, Bhaktivil. It, uh, it's really nice to hear somebody with passion um, using poetry to, uh, uh, to, to come across in an argument uh, that we're talking about here. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to give uh, the floor back to our speakers uh, to see if they want to come back on what other people have said. Um, I'm going to start at, in the same order. We'll start with Marat. Do you have anything to add to what people have said or to comment on what people have said? Then I'm going to ask people in the audience for their views as well. Yes, yes, uh, Garrett, of course, I would like to uh, uh, comment uh, on quite a lot of things which were said by our distinguished speakers. Um, uh, going back to the history of, of, of the name, uh, uh, the name Kazakhstan was officially adopted on 25th of October 1990 when Kazakh declared its sovereignty and approved uh, on August uh, uh, of, on 16 December 1991 when it's uh, declared the independence. So previously, name Kazakhstan was not officially used. So it's been used exactly for the last 32 years or 31 for, for right now. So the name was never discussed with the public. There was no referendum. There was no public discussion. It was a decision of a small group of people to call it Kazakhstan. And immediately, starting from 1996, if you go online, you'll find a lot of articles 
by local scholars, politicians, and the people saying it's the wrong name. It sparked again back in 2005, and you can find on the Forbes.kz, there's a lot of uh, uh, references, a lot of um, scientists in Kazakhstan starting to look into identity, into the history, what the country should be called and why the Kazakhstan. Uh, and, and, and it keeps keeps going on. I mean, there's plenty of links, just go online and then look what is the Kazakhstan name. And uh, in, uh, it was a lot of articles again back in 2014 and, and uh, about three or four years ago, the president Nazarbayev proposed his own idea of Kazakhstan Yelea. So it's a subject which Kazakh people bringing themselves. It's not the foreigners from Britain we just discussing, we just kind of um, reflecting because why? Because we open Central Asia magazine, because we are only magazine in the world which is actually 100% dedicated its time to Central Asia for the last 13 years. And it's a subject which was brought so high again that on 16th of uh, June, just two weeks ago, President Tokai on, on his speech uh, in, in a cruel time said that Again, the idea of changing uh, the name was brought on a Kurultai, and his opinion is not to change it. So because the country uh, has been signing a lot of international agreements um, under uh, uh, this name. But again, I think it's quite a poor excuse uh, uh, for not keeping the discussing uh, the topic. I mean, again, my opinion, I mean, our aim of our discussion or our articles is not to change the name immediately, but it's to keep talking about this and, 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 and trying to understand why it, it might be changed, it might not be changed. <laughs> yes. And uh, as Rafis um, Abazov said, uh, probably a reason if a country wants to distance itself from someone, which I personally do not agree. I think by changing name, the country would like not to distance from from, from any, but maybe to even get closer to its uh, to its uh, national identity, its culture, its lifestyle, its historic roots, and and also actually to unite the uh, country because one of the current issues in Kazakhstan, in new Kazakhstan, is unification. I mean, uh, I mean, let's be honest: the Kazakhstan is not as united. As some people try to portray. It's a huge country, uh, which uh, as minimum uh, divided to uh, three Jews. And uh, just a recent uh, uh, data from a census, which was published, 69.9, I think, or 69.8, I, I might be mistaken, is uh, Kazakh uh, ethnicity, uh, leaving another 31% to other nationalities. I mean, it's a lot. 31%. But even in Kazakhstan, this 69% of Kazakh people is very, very different. So we're talking about unification. Uh, and the country did change the name because of unification. I mean, let's talk to United Kingdom or United Arab Emirates. I mean, the British Empire was official name, but now it's United Kingdom because it's uniting uh, quite a different uh, parts uh, of, of, of the island or isles uh, with a different history in a, in a different attitude. And uh, it is what I'm trying to bring in our article. So, so Kazakhstan needs to be united. And Tokayev talks about this every week. Unification, unification, unification. And the country needs unification. It is one of proposal is to call United Kazakh State or United Kazakh Commonwealth or United Kazakh Jews, or United Kazakh Steppe. I mean, I personally like the word uh, Kazakh. It shows identity. And Kazakh Khanate has been at least as a lot of historical says for hundreds of years. Uh, and the idea of renaming is not to distance, but actually to unite, to unite the country. And ninth largest country in the world with a different mentality, different religion, different way of life, different climate. And if you even look, I mean, on the list, what are you, uh, countries which starts with the word United? United States, United Kingdom, United Arab Emirates. I mean, be honest, it's one of the best countries in the world uh, on economics, on stability, on many other things. 
Uh, and I'm not saying that some of them are good or bad, but it 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 really shows unification, and it is what I'm trying and and, and my co-author Atina, which also might, uh, might add a few words if she wants, uh, we're trying to emphasize. So it might be an option. Again, it's, it's just an idea. There might be a plenty of all of uh, other ideas which uh, might come from inside. But this idea which we discuss is not my idea. I just woke up. Say, okay, let's call it United. It's from listening to Kaif, it's from going to Kazakhstan. I go to Kazakhstan at least nine times a year and going to different parts of Kazakhstan, not just sitting in Almaty, but going to Kokshetau, Petropalovsk, Aktau, Atirau, Karagandak, Zilordash, in Kent, or Trav. You see how different the country and it's definitely needs unification. Always will face quite a lot of troubles in the next 10 years. Uh, so it it's can be an option, but this is my view. Okay, thank you, Marit, for that. And um, as, as I said earlier, you are the hardest working person. I think you're probably also the most traveled person in the last three years. Um, if your Facebook posts are anything to go by, you're everywhere. But uh, so thank you very much for your hard work. Um, I want to come back to Mohammed to see what uh, he um, thinks about what has already been said. Um, Mohammed, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. All right. Thank you for giving me a second opportunity. I think uh, what Murad just said, I'll take uh, the discussion from here onwards. Um, the question is about the idea of Kazakh identity. Are we talking about Kazakh is somebody who is ethnic Kazakh, or he is somebody or she is somebody who is living on this land. Like uh, in the United States, everybody, everyone, whether it's a black, Hispanic, white, European, they, he or she is an American. In Britain, I am Asian British, but I am Brit I'm not English, I'm not Scot, but I am British. So the, uh, what uh, concerns me a bit that uh, 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 stressing the Kazakh identity along ethnic lines, I think is not, uh, wouldn't be a right approach. Uh, Kazakhstan is a multicultural state. Uh, there are 120 uh, nationalities living here in peace and harmony for the last so many years. Uh, so everybody who is uh, living in Kazakhstan, loves this country, part of this culture, uh, appreciates its uh, traditions. So uh, uh, the government, the people, the society needs such debates, how to become a multicultural, more enhanced multiculturalism, inclusivity, um, uh, like uh, uh, we, are, we are living in an age where country, country uh, identi state identity, identities are becoming weaker. Look at the European Union. European Union uh, is still, uh, there are differences because uh, the French, German, British speak different languages and they have different cultures. Uh, but look at the former Soviet states. If you compare those, uh, they, because of their joint history, uh, Russian language is a strong binding force and it's a language of communication. So yes, Kazakh culture, Kazakh identity, Kazakh uh, uh, traditions are very important and they should be central. But along with that, I strongly agree with the policy of Kazakh government that they say we have three official languages. Uh, they are promoting communication. They are promoting education in English, Russian, and Kazakh. And if this, that they should move this uh, like this because in the in the in the 21st century is a century of alliances where different states join hands and they work together in the area of economy, in the area of uh, trade, in the area of uh, you know uh, political diplomacy. The European Union is an example, and this uh, uh, Union Eurasian Union uh, here is another example. Uh, uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Uh, which is an other very effective uh, international organization. So um, uh, we should not uh, bring down the idea of uh, national identity to, to some very narrow definition. Kazakhstan is a very important 
country, extremely important country, located in a strategic uh, uh, location is very important. They have, um, uh, you know, a wealth of natural resources, human resources. It can play a, 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 an effective role, uh, an active role in the global economy, in diplomacy, in regional politics. Uh, that's why we, uh, we friends of Kazakhstan and people in Kazakhstan should say, I feel more comfortable and happy uh, in Kazakhstan than maybe when, I, when I'm in the UK. I feel it, it's my second home uh, because of the uh, very peaceful nature of Kazakhstan, uh, the warmth of its people, the beauty of its culture, very nice uh, you know, nature. I don't see the kind of troubles which I see in Europe, uh, political troubles and polarization, uh, what I see in Britain, uh, what I see in Europe, even the America, the, uh, the, United States, in the United States, the society is very polarized. We don't see that kind of problems in this country. Therefore, such a discussions uh, which uh, are around the national identity and the, 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 the uh, uh, formation of a nation st a state uh, should be uh, dealt in a very carefully and look, uh, it, it should be comprehensive discussions. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. And uh, I think it's interesting, we started talking about the name of a country and we're now really into the culture of the country. Um, and uh, like you, Mohammed, uh, I see Kazakhstan as my second home, although I'm not there. Um, I had a very, very uh, enjoyable time there, um, an exciting time there when I was there, uh, living there for nearly 10 years. Um, I'm going to actually throw it open to the audience now because they've been sitting there patiently listening to different views. Um, I'm not sure where the people that are um, watching us and listening to us are, but I'm sure they will tell us. So I am going to go to Savara first. Sorry to um, drop that on you, Savara. Could you put your camera on possibly or at least your microphone and give us your view, Savara? I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Savara, can you hear us? Don't be shy. No, Savara is not responding. Okay. Um, Mukwadas, Mukwadas, is that how you say it? Mukwadas, can you hear me? Hi. Would you like to give your yeah. viewpoint? Hi. Hi, hi. Yes, my name is Mukadas. Oh, we've broken up. Whereabouts, whereabouts are you, Mukadas? Somewhere a long way away by the sounds of it. Okay, um, we have lost your sound, unfortunately. We will come back to you if we get a better signal. Okay, uh, Alzira, can you hear us? Um, uh, wait a second, please. Can you see me? I can see you. Hello, Alzira. Whereabouts are hello. you? Uh, hello, my name is Alzira. Nice to meet you. And I'm a new intern here. So uh, it was a great pleasure to listen all of, all of you about uh, an issue. So. And I like to say that, uh, yeah, the, can you hear me well? Because yes, I can hear you. to yep. some voice. No problem. Okay. So um, listening to all of you, I think that, yeah, this is a, maybe an issue. And this issue should be maybe decided by the people living in Kazakhstan first. Why is, uh, should they change the title as the name of the country? and? uh what it uh, bring what it will bring for them after they change it so i think after deciding these two important questions so uh, people should really bring the problem into i mean decision yeah thank you okay thank you very much alzira um let's try sivara again sivara can you hear me no okay have we got um Igarim? Igorim, can you hear me? I don't think these people exist. <laughs> okay, Igorim's not responding either. Uh, Lazat, Lazat, let's try Lazat. Lazat, can you hear me? Why is everyone being so shy? Ah, Lazat, you're there. Yes, 
Hello. Good. Hello. What are your um, views on the subject we have been discussing? First uh, conference. My English is not very well. My husband uh, said my idea. Hi to everyone. Uh, I'm Sabit and uh, uh, I'm gonna uh, uh, help uh, help Lizata out uh, with, 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 with this talk. With this talk. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Я понимаю, о чем была полемика о том, что New Kazakhstan and New Name. I don't understand the course of this conversation about the uh, about the name of New Kazakhstan. Я хочу обратиться в прошлое. Дело в том, что на территории от Каспия и до Китайской стены, если я не ошибаюсь, в прошлые uh, века. I, I would like to uh, look back uh, to the past of Kazakhstan and uh, 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 from uh, the Great Wall in China uh, to Caspian coast. Было самодостаточное государство Туран. It was uh, it was a sovereign state called Turan. Поэтому было бы совершенно справедливо, если бы. And I think it's fair. Если бы мы обратились к этому прекрасному прошлому. If you look at this uh, uh, beautiful past. Которая объединяла многие многие тюркские народы. That united uh, many uh, uh, Turkic uh, nations. Потому что вы и мы знаем Казахстан, Киргизстан, Узбекистан, Туркменистан, Таджикистан. Эти все государства были приблизительно в едином регионе. All these states uh, used to be in the same region. И поэтому, если мы сейчас возьмем это имя Туран, and uh, if we uh, uh, take up this uh, uh, Turan name, то я думаю, что это будет uh, всем понятно, особенно тем, которые являются нашими братскими и близкими нам и географически, и геополитически, and, и... Uh, and this Turan name... Uh, would be would be understandable to to all nations uh, living here. <laughs> and that that's actually uh, uh, brief what what I wanted to say. Okay, thank you very much, Lazak, for for that point of view, and um, I'm sure that that will be um, on the minds of lots of people in Kazakhstan. Let's go on to Adelina. Adelina, can you hear me? Hi, yes, I can hear you. Excellent. Whereabouts are you, Adelina? Pardon? Whereabouts are you? Are you in, in Kazakhstan? Uh, no, no, no. I'm in Kyrgyzstan. Okay. Okay. Lovely. Nice country. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, so, as I understand, the question is, uh, should we change the name not we but should the name of kazakhstan be changed right so yes. um my opinion is I, I don't see actually the point of changing it i i think it's uh like it's been kazakhstan for so long and like all people know it now as kazakhstan and i don't see really the point so yeah okay Okay, and is do you think that's a, a view of younger people or a view of people across all ages? Um, well, I, I guess it's um, um, of all of, uh, of people of all ages. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for your opinion. Um, where have we got to? Um, Alzira, did Alzira... Oh no, Alzira, we talked to you. Sorry, Alzira. Um, uh, Ruslan, is Ruslan still there? Ruslan, can you hear me? Hi. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry, it's Beg Begami, isn't it? Not Ruslan. I apologize. I've got the name around the wrong way on my screen. Okay. Hello. Begami. 
Begimai? Maybe I'm saying it wrong. Ah, Begimai. Hello. Hi, can you hear me? Hi. I can hear you. We can hear you, yes. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it does sound like you're in a police car, but... Um... Yes, I live in uh, New District, so I can hear everything. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, okay. I'm from Bristol. Uh, my name is Begimai. Uh, so... Uh, I think if uh, people of Palestine want to change its name and it will help them, um, but with authentic, maybe with some other uh, ethnic uh, people, maybe uh, like inclusive name, uh, if a new, new name of Kazakhstan will be inclusive, like for other many nations in uh, Kazakhstan, like it can change. If just um, People of Kazakhstan gonna want to change it. So it's up to them. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for your opinion there. Um, I see uh, a, a friend of mine, Yulia Ward, is uh, has joined us. Yulia, do you have a, an opinion on this topic of whether Kazakhstan should change its name? Why? How? If? Whatever? Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my my personal opinion since the beginning uh, it was that if it will be a new name of Kazakhstan like all the marketing and all the stuff has to be changed and that's really a lot of money it's, it's like start from scratch to do all that I understand if the country will not have any identity, but in this in this situation, like changing a name and changing the completely whole identity, I don't see a reason in that because our identity uh, is kind of strong. Uh, with the colors, with the name, but in case if there will be some new area or new town in Kazakhstan that like modern city that could have a modern name and modern identity, I like as a part of the country, I think that will be better than changing a name because changing like from my perspective changing a name this is the whole whole big thing like changing everything and our people will be not uh, happy with that because they will be you know like grumpy again why are you changing name spending so much money you better put this money for for something better like build a hospital school kindergarten blah 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 for example we had like we already had this experience with nur sultan right and uh, so the city astana was changed to uh Tselinagrad was changed to astana and then it was changed to nur sultan and the people are not really happy with that. And those people who was born in Tselinagrad, they still call themselves Tselinagradse. And they don't care about Nur Sultan, Astana. And uh, they actually want, after the president changed, they wanted to, to bring back the old name. But that was the whole thing with the changing from Astana to Nur Sultan and so many complaints. And I cannot say that it, it, it made our country identity stronger in that point. So yeah, this is my, my opinion. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you, Yulia. Great to speak to you again. Um, and always nice to see the practical side of a a marketing expert, which is what Yulia is, and uh, on that side there. Um, Mohammed, yeah. there is a hand up. Somebody wishes to speak. 
Yes, uh, we have a guest from Uzbekistan. He's our colleague, Dawar Bey. He wants to contribute, if you allow him. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Can, can someone translate for him? Because I don't speak Russian. Um, let, if you do it in Russian, I think I'm the only one here who doesn't speak Russian. So it can be translated for me after. So if you do it in Russian, do it in Russian. Assalamu alaikum. Всем здравствуйте, меня зовут Таурбек. Я представляю Узбекистан, Ташкент, Адижан. Привет большой. И когда поднимаются такие вопросы, самоидентификация или же переименование даже уровней государства, такие мероприятия, во-первых, я многими согласен, должно выйти из пожелания народа Казахстана. И следующий вопрос, когда... Весь мир идет на объединение, глобализацию, и Казахстан вроде через западного, как говорится, видения хочет самоидентифицироваться. Это как понять? Вот Европа объединяется, Европейский Союз, даже они еще объединились как Шенгенская зона, мы уже называем, у тебя есть Шенген, то есть какой-то определенный круг называем, а при этом... Казахстан не хочет стать похожим Афганистан, Пакистан, Узбекистан и Туркменистан. Это тоже как-то веселитообразно. Например, узнаваемость казахского народа уже определена. Вот даже смотря Узбекистан и Казахстан, или Крымстан, мы уже определены. Вот даже головной город, культура, кулинария, даже интересы уже различные. Здесь э, еще определиться своим названием, как отличаться от региона или же не, не быть похожим, это вопрос, по-моему, э, совсем абсурдный, по моему мнению. Спасибо за внимание. Thank you very much. Uh, I am sure that one of my colleagues will translate that for me a little bit later and um, let me know what was said there. Um, I am very pleased that everybody's um, contributing so well i want to come to uh, another sort of stalwart shall we say of uh, uh ocr and oca and uh, ecg at uh, tina tina whereabouts are you tina hello uh right now i'm in yekaterinburg uh, it's uh somewhere in the middle of uh, russia okay. uh, Ural mountains yes and, and uh, now we're happy to uh make some uh, activities here but uh coming back to the question uh, of uh, renaming or rebranding uh we talk a lot about the legacy of uh, renaming uh what should it be uh should the uh people of kazakhstan uh be involved in that or not or something like that but uh for me uh during the writing uh the article uh with uh, uh mr akmijanov for me, the question was, what for? Uh, what result we want to have? Uh, is uh, the problem uh, uh, in the name? Or maybe we can uh, say something like, you know, um, for me, uh, identity is a very, very strange term because um, you know, this is a bit out of reality of you know ordinary people uh, they doesn't think uh, like oh uh, if uh, I feel myself a true Kazakh or not because um, we have our everyday life our uh, you know everyday uh, problems and uh, this is far away from us um, uh, in you know very uh, philosophical way for me it's more about the problem of collaboration the problem of living on one territory uh, as um, previous speakers uh, told uh, we have very multicultural country and um, this is uh, the question of you know the way of collaboration the way of uh, living together and going together well so uh, i'm not sure it depends on name itself uh, I mean, name of a country. Uh, and this is uh, the real problem for me is how to uh, find the balance between different nations on one territory. Uh, and we have uh, this uh, problem uh, now and uh, it's growing, it's growing. And 
for me, the name uh, can be the uh, next step of escalation of uh, this uh, deep conflict uh, of different cultures and different nations uh, locked in one territory. Um, let me explain myself. Um, if we have uh, some name of a country um, based on the name of nationality, like Kazakh people, for example, and we talked about that today, uh, we have a country of that supreme nation. But it might be uh, that uh, other different nations living in uh, the same territory could be a little bit disagree uh, with the question of uh, supreme nation, who could be the leader, who could be the one nation worth to uh, rule the country, to, you know, to build the strategy and so on. Uh, for me, it's a very, very complicated question and it's more about uh, you know, people's relationships, because my grandmother, for, for example, has been living in Kazakhstan for 18 years, and my mother has been living in Kazakhstan for 13 years uh, when she was a child. And uh, uh, this is not the problem of uh, nowadays. Uh, this problem existed, uh, I don't know, maybe since the beginning of uh, Soviet Union, maybe earlier. I have no idea, but uh, even in 80s, in 90s, it was a very uh, painful question, who should, uh, who could be the leader, who could be the uh, one supreme nation who will, who will um, build the strategy of uh, development. And for me, it's very important to be uh, really careful with the cultural, um, you know, cultural difference uh, between every nation and uh, to worth each and every nation. And uh, may the name uh, be the, you know, the reason of uh, deep conflict between uh, one, <laughs> you know, supreme nation and other nations living on the territory. For me, it's important, and uh, I think it's more about identity than uh, discussing the identity itself uh, as a philosophical question. So that's what I want to say, uh, and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Tyna, and, and uh, I think some very pertinent um, comments there. Uh, I'm going to ask if there is anybody else who would like to comment. Uh, I, I'm, I'm uh, conscious that Stephen, would you uh, would you like to make any more comments? And, and Marat has got his hand up. Anybody else as well, Stephen? Um, yeah, sure. Um, just to agree with some of the points that Tyna and Marat were making, really, I think if there is a purpose to this then it is inclusivity because at the moment Kazakhstan being the land of the Kazakhs yeah sure it's the Kazakhs people's land but say 23 percent of the people there are ethnic Russians and there are a lot of ethnicities in the country and you see in the north of the country there are people that don't want to be part of Kazakhstan they would rather be part of Russia so a more inclusive name would be useful especially in the current time with um with what we're seeing with the Russian revanchism, it would be really useful to have a name that means the, the land for all of the people that live in Kazakhstan, rather than something which sounds like the land of the ethnic Kazakhs. Okay, thank you very much for that. Uh, Yulia, you would like to say something? Yeah, uh, because we really had this question uh, for, uh, for a long time and different bloggers uh, i remember one blogger she made a comment about that she was like okay maybe i will become uh, a president an ex president and i will call and i will call the country by my surname and everybody would be called like the nation will be called by my surname so it was like kind of joke so in in my perspective and as a citizen of Kazakhstan, I really don't see a reason in the name of the country because it was, from my experience, it was so hard to identify myself in the international world where people actually doesn't really know what is Kazakhstan. So for them, it took some time to, to figure where is Kazakhstan and uh, who is, who's those people? And finally, we we got to the level that where when people actually know where is the Kazakhstan and what is happening and who is those people. And 
now if we will change the name it will start over like we will have to start again explain and then explanation will get to the point where okay it will be some country and people will ask where is this country who is what what is this country and we will be ah, it's old kazakhstan so again we will lead to the old name so I, from my opinion from my perspective i think we should stick to to the old name kazakhstan to the old identity but maybe make a in, in, inside branding something like that thank you okay thank you yulia um before i wind everything up ah uh, yes we have uh back to go yes of course Practical, the floor is yours. Can you unmute and then we will hear your views. Okay. okay. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Uh, 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 the ideas are very interesting for us to get um, uh, because it is not so simple issue. It is enough important issue for the world society. Uh, and um, I might say that uh, uh, if uh, there is a kind of uh, example, uh, if I try to demonstrate, it is the uh, model of Malaysia. Malaysia, you know, uh, Malay people after, uh, uh, after uh, uh, the independence, uh, they had to wait for 12 years in order to make the power of their nation more, much more stronger. And here, I just want to accent on the um, strength of the nation uh, in every uh, you know uh, stage uh, of the state uh, it is connected again with uh, uh, economics politics and the other other directions but the most important thing it is the power of the uh, language in the state in the business in everywhere uh, that is why I might be very uh, um, confident about the idea. Time comes that um, the um, strength of the state language, uh, the, my mother tongue, Kazakh language, will become much more stronger. And the, every citizen in my state, in Kazakhstan, will uh, master state language, Kazakh language, will respect the land where they live. They uh, uh, grow up, they uh, uh, live happily thanks to the land. That is why I might be very, very uh, uh, pleased with the given idea. Time comes, uh, maybe the renaming of the state uh, name is not so important here, but here is given another idea. It is the strength of the state itself in the world. Thank you for attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Practical. And I say thank you very much for all your hard work for Eurasian Creative Guild as well. Um, I am going to draw this together, I think, because uh, this has been, um, it was interesting when I, when I was offered this job as managing this particular Zoom meeting, I thought, well, this, this is going to be fairly easy. It's a yes or no, isn't it? But actually, it's not. It's a very complicated question and it's a complicated question on so many different levels i, I am really grateful um for stephen to write for writing the article that has brought this to uh, that to our attention um i hope you'll all get a chance to read the article in uh, oca magazine which is out now and um and there's uh, some other interesting articles in there as well sort of related to some of the things we've been talking about this afternoon um, I apologise to those people who we couldn't get through to uh, on their on their audio, and I know there are a couple of people who wanted to comment, but uh, connections weren't good enough. But I'm sure that uh, if you send messages through, we will um, digest them as well. Can I say a big thank you to all of our speakers? Uh, a big thank you to the audience, uh, and uh, and a big thank you, as I say, to the the team at uh, ECG for putting this meeting together. Um, I think it's a question that is going to, um, as they say, run and run, and uh, I'm sure that we will come back to this at some point in the future. It's obviously uh, an emotive um, issue that I'm sure will um, tax people's brains, the people that actually have to make the final decision, if the decision ever needs to be made. Um, uh, good luck to them, I think. 
Um, so I, I would just like to say Rachmet, uh, Salbolnis to my Kazakh friends out there. And, um, uh, and thank you very much to everybody else. And uh, I think we can draw the meeting to a close. Vitalina, would you like to say anything? I just want to say thank you uh, for all our speakers. I really uh, heard a lot of interesting ideas uh, which has been said today. So just want to wish you a great holiday, great weekend, uh, and hope to see you in our next Zoom meetings. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, goodbye.